Howdy peeps and welcome or welcome back if it's your first time here hope we can earn a subscription today we are at the ruins of Thetford Priory in Thetford it is the Priory of Our Lady of Thetford it was one of the largest and richest religious foundations in East Anglia the reason I'm looking off in the weird angles notes well, let's start the wonder oh wild Mary has vanished She's zoomed off somewhere. So what we're going to do today is we've got some notes. We're just going to wander around and see what's occurring. So if we start here, we'll take in the sheer scale of the place. It's it's not little. And the gatehouse is no longer here either. So. You can't see that. So as we wander along. So it was uh, founded in 1103-1104 by Roger Bigod and affiliated to the Benedictine Abbey in Cluny, France. Built in the magnificent scale in a rich architectural clunal style or clunial style. And of course like any other religious place in the UK it was suppressed in the 1540s during Henry VIII's Re Reformation and fell to disrepair. Now, Roger Bigod, Bigod, whichever way it's pronounced, was a close, how to put it, affiliate of a certain Guillaume Labatard, otherwise known as William the Conqueror, and he laid the foundation stone on the 1st of September 1107, and the presbytery was complete by 1114. The nave took an extra 60 years to build. This is actually what we're walking around at the moment, is actually the main churchy parts. As you can see, it was quite a sizable place. And it is raining slightly today, so... And it's a Sunday in England, so people are mowing the lawns. And in 1114, there was enough work completed enough... Enough work completed enough? Enough work completed for the monks to start moving in. And the structures, all the structures have been adapted and expanded throughout the Middle Ages. It's a wild Mary. <laughs> Now it's a typical monastic layout with the buildings surrounding a central cloister with covered walkways and beyond the core of the monastery were the infirmary, cloister, the lodgings, barns and stables all enclosed by walls and a gatehouse. Uh, mid 13th century onwards the Priory Church was home to an apparently miracle working statue of the Virgin, Saint M Virgin Mary which saw lots of people coming here on pilgrimage. Understandably if there's a miracle granting statue you're going to come visit aren't you? I mean, you see the bottom of one of the staircases leading up would no doubt have been a rather impressive tower. As you can see it's a flint and mortar construction dressed with stone. Not entirely sure what kind of stone, I don't think it's ashlar, but we can see. And as we go through this we're going to find some um, little 
plaques that give a bit of information about the place and there's one just down here and we probably shouldn't stand on it but here we go the tomb of Th Thomas Howard Duke of Norfolk Victor of Flodenfield 1513 died 1524 to the pilgrimages didn't we so yes the pilgrims and the pilgrimages all bought in lots and lots of money as does happen in these places uh, oh, oh, you, you want a, you want a miracle that's gonna cost you <laughs> here we are I'll just point the camera and let you read give you time to pause some information about the presbytery. A bit of close up on how the tomb of Thomas Howard actually looked and the layout of the church. And we are where the orange dot is. Oh, the rain's getting on me. Notes. We should carry on going this way. So, by the end of the 13th century, the whole east end of the church was rebuilt onto a grander scale due to the money that was brought in by the pilgrims, all seeking their holy miracles, miracles. And I wrote these notes several months ago, so you have to excuse me, it's taken a bit of a bit of a while to understand my own handwriting. Here we do actually have a what looks to be either a fireplace or a although it's blocked from the top I think. Yeah so it's not a fireplace that should be a uh, a thingy. But here we are in helpfully labelled signposted the North Transept. <laughs> we come out of the actual, out of the actual priory itself, as it were, the church. Here we have the later sacristy remains of, with some kind of cubby hole. Now unfortunately the gatehouse we can't visit today because it is through those trees and is now a private dwelling. More on that later. So as you can see that would be the gatehouse with the wall coming around. So as we keep wandering this direction uh, yes, the gatehouse was built in the 14th century and as I say, this is a lovely place to be because we're right on the outside of a very busy town very calm and peaceful with all the birdies singing and not too many people wandering about either now, In 1248 the notorious dissolute prior of that good, prior Stephen, was stabbed to death in a quarrel with a monk. We don't entirely know what about. We can hazard guesses, but it's probably best not to. And died just outside the great west door of the church. to angle the screen up a bit so I can actually see where I'm pointing it. <laughs> and as we'll get to later in the video, there's reasons for mentioning. So is the 
info board on the church and nave and you can see where we are now where we've moved to get these running around so we'll go this away out back now the last Roger Bigod however it's pronounced died in 1306 and the estate, his estates were passed to the crown which then passed to the Duke of Norfolk hence why we have Duke of Norfolk buried here in 1536 the entire priory was threatened with suppression and, but the staunchly Catholic third Duke of Norfolk petitioned King Henry VIII to convert the priory to a college of secular canons adding into the argument that he was preparing the church for not only his tomb but also King Henry's illegitimate son Henry Fitzroy Duke of Richmond unfortunately King Henry if you know your history was a bit of um, a not nice person and he said no so 16th of February 1540 the last prior and 16 months surrendered to the King's Commissioners and that was it for the uh, entire site you can see where we are now here we're standing here now but you can see just how grand a site it actually was Now the prior's lodging, which I believe this might actually be, was used as a house up until the 1740s. And it was un under you know, had various alterations and upgrades over the years, centuries. But by the 1820s, even that was a roofless ruin. And that brings us to the end of the tale, I'm afraid. We've still got quite a bit to walk around, so we're going to have to waffle now, aren't we? We'll start walking a bit faster. <laughs> and various places around here, as well as the odd beer can and things that people keep leaving behind, rubbish. You know what people are like, they don't respect anything these days. He says, climbing up on the place. And so we've got things like here... Yes, full of rubbish. Although the rubbish was obviously put in before the bars went on, so yeah, perhaps they should have uh, cleared the rubbish out before they took the bars off. So we are on the original, or the, the actual flooring, as was. Not quite why this is so low. I guess this was probably a cellar for food storage down here. which would make a lot of sense. Ooh. Keep your food below the ground where it's cooler. I was about to wander through there and realise I can't get out the other side. <laughs> uh, that in the corner has just been, that's a recent build. Um, just to try and keep it in the similar vein as the actual Priory itself. We come around here into what was, I believe, the gardens where the monks would obviously grow their own food. And also, yeah, we do have the fencing up because certain parts of it are a little bit on the wobbly side and people don't want to get sued because large blocks of masonry fell on someone's head it never goes down well when that sort of thing happens now yes I, I know the camera is a bit shaky here because 
we are walking across rough ground it's filled with mole hills <laughs> so yes here we are this was the prior's lodging the prior's house and if we have a bit of a look see You can pause and have a read. We are, we are. Uh, there. And so if we look there and look up, we can see the two arches that they're making mention of. The 12th century. Quite grand arches for leading into a priory or a house. But then the church has always been rich. You know what they are. We're going to have to zoom in on this because, you know, miniature buttresses. <laughs> I've got a feeling they're fairly modern though. They're literally there to hold the remains of the wall up. But you can never beat a buttress. Good, good to have a bit of buttress in your day. So just off in the distance we can make out the new buildings and the houses that make up the town of Thetford. So named because there is a Thet, which is the river, which is literally just over there and is what the monks use for a water supply. And we'll see a bit about that in a minute. So yes, we have the River Thet and we have a Ford. So, imaginative lot that the ancient Britons were. It got named Thet Ford. And this is a bit of a steep hill to be coming down. Ugh. So now we're into what I believe are actually the monks' quarters or Perhaps various, I don't know, cafeterias, <laughs> kitchens, food preparation areas. And I'm not entirely sure what these would be. Sort of semi rounded. It would make sense if there were fires or something. We have a well right next door. Very good for dousing said fires. And we have a hole next to that. Which just leads straight down. And over here what I'm I'm, I'm no archaeologist. But that looks suspiciously like a bread oven to me. All these days it'd be bigger and you'd cook pizzas in it but given the size and shape I would call that a bread oven. Now if we come along this way he says excuse me We are back out again and we are here with what I think, not entirely sure, might be the laundry because this is where the water came in from the river set where they dug a channel and it runs through this building which had a wall as you can see the other side so they could access straight down to the water. So it was either something like a laundry or perhaps a rather grand toilet. Do you do in straight into the water? <laughs> Gets taken straight back down to the river that way. But there aren't, don't appear to be any signs saying what this is. How are we doing on time? 
Yeah. Yeah, this, this is going to be quite a lengthy video, I do apologise. As we come up through here, and once I'm done, I've got to find Mary. Um, I am being careful when I'm stepping on the flint work not to actually knock anything loose or damage anything. So, this is the warming house according to the plaque on the wall there and that to me looks like a honking great fireplace so would make sense and as we come through I'm sure there have been excavations and things here but whether time team visited I don't know Ooh. there's a big old plaque down here that we missed I might have to wander back that way and see what it says. I think there was another plaque there, but <laughs> that's Brook. So, where we are now is actually the cloister. So, what I'm walking on would have been the covered walkways around the edges. I'll wave the camera around a bit. So this is generally a nice open air area in the middle of the priory for I guess the monks or whoever to go about their duties. Catch a few rays. Experience a bit of wildlife. You've got to remember around about the time as this place was operational, there would have been a lot more general wildlife around. It wouldn't have been such a big big town back then. And here we are, the refectory. The monastic dining hall. Yep. Sure to have 17 hours between them. their tea in the evening and their dinner in the morning. <laughs> Strange way around looking at it, but there's only so much a monk can eat. You can't eat too much or you'll, uh, you won't fit in your habit. Although, I suppose, with the way a habit is actually fitted, there's probably not really too much problem if you start gaining a few pounds or kilos or stone or hundred weight so where the warming room was was also the parlour when you come into my parlour said the spiders of the fly before I have a little something here that's probably blasphemous or heretical but you know I can't go through what's going to be rather near 30 minutes and not say something at least remotely blasphemous or heretical can I that wouldn't be me but we are back to the beginning now pretty much I'm just going to have a look at the infirmary And the attached buildings. So I'll just read that sign. The infirmary was the monastic hospital in the 12th century. It comprised a single range of the hall and chapel. Small cloister attached to around 1250. So this would be the hall and the chapel. And then around here we have the small cloister. These are, this would have been another building, obviously the cloister is a big rocky <laughs> bit in the middle. 
There are some interesting things we've spotted as we've been wandering around. Obviously I'm here with Mary. Various random holes and things. That you'd assume would serve a purpose, but we can't figure out what. So whether they're for getting rid of waste, I don't know. Or whether the ground level's much higher than it was back then. I don't know. So here we are, the infirmary cloister. Again, with its covered walkway around the outside. Not covered now, obviously. But there we are. Actually, from here, we can get a better view of the gatehouse. Which has obviously had many and many update over the years. If there's anything of the original left, I'd actually be quite surprised. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Let's get this screen turned around. Uh, there we go. So, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Bit of a longer one, but as you can see, it's a fairly large place. There are ghost stories, but I will get to those in a separate video. There's... Some people get a bit upset if you start mentioning ghost stories in religious places, so we'll, we'll, we'll bow to what they say, as it were. Anyway, if you liked it, <coughs> excuse me, COVID, like, comment, subscribe. If you've got anything you'd like to add, stick it down in the comments below. Channel memberships are also open. But anyway, thank you very much. Peace out, and bye-bye. You thought I was going to do the rock on, didn't you? <laughs>